Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So if you're watching this, you're probably interested in potentially moving to Oklahoma City. And in today's video, if that's you and you're thinking about possibly moving here, I'm gonna help you avoid making one of the biggest mistakes of your life. Sound interesting? So before I divulge what that's all about, I wanna ask you a question. Have you ever made a big decision that you later regretted? You know, one that turned out to be a really expensive mistake. Maybe you bought a high dollar sports car only to find out that, oh no, the seats really hurt your back. Or you bought a house only to find out that the next door neighbor's kid has aspirations to be the next Alex Van Halen, playing his drums in his garage all day long. Or sticking with houses, maybe you found out like my wife and I did that, you know what, you really should have paid more attention to those train tracks that were about two miles east of your house before you closed on the property. Because you quickly discovered that trains, they like to blow their whistles at railroad crossings a lot at night. And more importantly, you learn that sound travels a long way at night. Can you get out of these kind of situations? Yeah, but it'll cost you. But in both cases, you're not stuck. Like I said at the outset, the reason I made this video is to help you avoid an even bigger mistake that doesn't have an easy way out. You know, like uprooting your family and moving them across the U.S. to a new town like Oklahoma City, and then find out you can't stand living here. Uh, yeah, that would pose a problem. And unlike the previous examples, extricating yourself from that one, it's not going to be fun. Hello everyone, my name is Lynn Taggart. I'm a realtor with Coldwell Banker Select in Edmond, Oklahoma. We help people every day that are thinking about making Oklahoma City their new home. And lots of folks are moving here for a lot of reasons. Many of them are drawn here because of the low cost of living, which I discuss here. Having said that, what I don't want to have happen is that you move here and then find yourself regretting your decision, regardless of how affordable it is. Life's too short to be miserable. And that's why I made this video, to make sure you know what you're getting into before you get here. Now I know for a fact that we have a lot of folks moving here from the West coast, as you can see on this migration map I found on Redfin. But rest assured, living in California, Oregon, or Washington State is a whole different animal than living in Oklahoma. And so in this video, I'm going to point out some things to be aware of before you commit to making the move here, especially so if you're coming here from the West Coast. In my opinion, none of these things I'm about to share are deal breakers individually, but when you combine them all, they might just push someone over the edge, causing them to decide that, you know what, this place is just not for them. So what are the things that might cause you to think twice about moving to Oklahoma City? Well, there's quite a list. So let's start with number one. Let's get this one out of the way first. Oklahoma City specifically and Oklahoma in general is red, very red. As a friend of mine says, this state has a sun burn it so red. So yes, conservative values and conservative politics rule the roost in Oklahoma. Now politics and values can be a sensitive subject, but it's important to mention that if you lean more towards progressive or liberal ideologies, uh, you might find it challenging to feel at home here. In other words, you need to really consider how the conservative values and politics that are so pervasive here might impact your lifestyle and sense of belonging. So just how red is Oklahoma? Well, in 2016 and 2020, in both presidential elections, every single county in Oklahoma Oklahoma voted Republican. One national publication put Oklahoma City at number one on their list of the 10 most conservative cities in the U.S. And in similar fashion, Forbes magazine recently ranked Oklahoma City as the second most conservative city in the United States. Our governor's Republican, as are both of our U.S. senators and all of our congressmen and women. Having said that, as conservative as Oklahoma is, what's truly remarkable and was shocking to many is that medicinal marijuana passed here and it's legal here now. And believe it or not, last year for the first time, tax revenue in Oklahoma from the sale of medicinal marijuana products exceeded the tax revenue from the sale of beer. Things are beginning to change here, although not as fast as many would like. Just be advised. Okay, the second point. If you're a parent and you're looking for outstanding public schools in Oklahoma City, for the most part, you're not going to be happy here. And you're going to have a challenge, not just finding a house, but finding a house in a great school district. It can be done, but it will take some work. I go into a lot more detail in this video here, talking about the school districts in Oklahoma City. But suffice it to say, in general, the general performance of most of the public school districts in central Oklahoma is merely average at best. And the larger districts, like Oklahoma City Public Schools and Putnam City Public Schools face numerous challenges. Funding issues are resulting in overcrowded classrooms and limited resources. This can significantly impact the quality of education your children receive. If you have kids or plan to start a family, it's crucial to carefully research the available school district options. Now, it's not all bad news because there are districts in the area that are very highly ranked 
things like areas like Deer Creek, uh, Edmond, Piedmont, and Yukon in the north and northwest part of Oklahoma City, and Mustang Moore and Norman schools down south. These and many private schools in the area clearly stand head and shoulders above the rest and are some of the finest schools in the state. The performance of the rest of the public schools in central Oklahoma is pretty dismal, especially when it comes to test scores and graduation rates. Take a look at this chart. So Oklahoma lags surrounding states when it comes to the amount typically spent per student, and that's a common metric for comparing the quality of public school education state by state. And to make matters worse, due to poor teacher pay in the state, many teachers are leaving Oklahoma for higher paying jobs elsewhere. Quality education in Oklahoma is a problem area and it continues to be so. So number three, let's shift gears and talk about your health. So specifically, let's talk about your allergies. So if you're like me and you're prone to seasonal allergies, you know things like hay fever and asthma, Moving to Oklahoma City mm, might not be the best idea. Of the 100 most populated metropolitan areas in the continental U.S. whose residents are plagued with pollen allergies, Oklahoma City comes in at number four with Tulsa ranked right behind us at number five. These scores are based on tree, grass, and weed pollen scores, over-the-counter allergy medicine use, and availability of board-certified allergists and immunologists. Oklahoma City has to deal with pollen all four seasons of the year, so many allergy sufferers don't get much of a break. I can attest to that. That being the case, all this pollen can make life miserable for us allergy sufferers. If you're in this group like me, be prepared for sneezing fits, itchy eyes, and a whole lot of discomfort if making the move to Oklahoma City is in your future. Admittedly, I have to take an antihistamine every day to combat it. It's not something I often talked about, but you know what? You should seriously consider it if you or someone in your family struggles with allergies. Okay, the fourth point on the list, if you're an environmentalist or you're deeply committed to green energy, living in Oklahoma, mm, might give you real heartburn. Why? Because when it comes to jobs in Oklahoma, for the most part, they're concentrated in a single industry, oil and natural gas. You know, those things we call fossil fuels. Whether exploring for it, producing it, refining it, or transporting it, oil and natural gas makes Oklahoma's economy go. In fact, having previously worked in oil and gas as an engineer for over 20 years, I knew that that sector accounted for a great deal of the local economy, but I was frankly a little shocked to learn of a recent PricewaterhouseCooper study that showed that oil and gas accounts for one out of every four jobs in Oklahoma, both directly and indirectly. That's 400,000 well-paying jobs. Wow, that's astounding. It's also not good when your ideal goal is to have a highly diversified economy supporting a region. Not only that, but working in the oil and gas business is highly cyclical with booms and busts and large layoffs happening repeatedly, entirely dependent on the ups and downs and ups and downs of the price of crude oil. And I speak from experience on this, having been through a total of, get this, seven layoffs in my oil and gas career. Talk about stress-inducing. Unfortunately, there are a few other large employers in the area, with the exceptions being Tinker Air Force Base in near, nearby Midwest City, Oklahoma, AT&T, Hobby Lobby, and Paycom. There's an absence of large high-tech employers to be found in Oklahoma City. That could change in the future, but for now, high-tech jobs are few and far between, and that includes companies focused on renewable alternative energy technologies. They just don't exist here. If you're seeking a diverse range of job prospects or wish to explore alternative industries, you might find your options here are really limited. Okay, number five. So let's talk cars. Oh, you say you don't own a car? Hmm. Well, then living in Oklahoma City is going to be a major problem for you. And you may find yourself car shopping as a result before you know it. Why? Because Oklahoma City is spread out. I mean, really spread out. We rank 20th in the U.S. in terms of overall population with 1.4 million folks living in the Oklahoma City Metroplex. But we rank 8th in terms of sheer physical size. Our city's footprint in terms of square miles. Look at this chart. I've shown this in a few of my videos. All of these large U.S. cities could easily fit within the city limits of Oklahoma City. Isn't that remarkable? Adding to the problem, unlike larger cities like Dallas, Oklahoma City has no light rail system to help with getting Getting around town. Look at this map to see how the DART system, that's the Dallas Area Rapid, Rapid Transit System, serves a large part of Greater Dallas. Oklahoma City has nothing like this to offer, and to my knowledge, nothing's on the drawing board for the future. Yeah, Oklahoma City just recently launched a new streetcar system in downtown Oklahoma City, which is great, but it only serves the inner Oklahoma City core areas. So lack of an efficient public transportation system is a big problem here. And your only real solution is to either use Uber everywhere. There are people that do it, but it can get very expensive. Or you buy or lease a car, which means you'll have to deal with car payments and insurance and maintenance and fuel and parking considerations, all of that. Getting around Oklahoma City means you're going to have to drive. 
and deal with traffic congestion, increased fuel costs, and the general inconveniences of daily driving. And if that's not bad enough, one of the major, thor major thoroughfares through town, the Kilpatrick Turnpike, it's a pay-to-use toll highway. And to top it all off, when you're not on a well-paved road like the Kilpatrick, you must navigate roads that are often in really bad shape. I speak from experience here, I've personally blown out a couple of tires here in Oklahoma City after hitting several large potholes. Wish I had better news to share on this front, but it is what it is. If you prefer the convenience of efficient public transportation, this lack of infrastructure might be a deal breaker when it comes to deciding whether or not to live here. So speaking of cars and insurance, it may surprise you that they have a tie to our next topic, which is severe weather. How? Well, did you know Oklahoma ranks in the top three states nationally when it comes to automobile hail damage claims? Yeah. Also, homeowners aren't immune either. Homeowner, homeowners insurance policies here are also very high, twice the national average, again due to the large number of hail claims we have each year uh, and the damage that's done to our roofs. Just last month, we had a huge hailstorm here in Oklahoma City with hailstones at my house that were the size of tennis balls. You can check out this picture here. Unbelievable. It's the biggest hail I've ever seen in my life. I'm sure I'll be getting a new roof as a result. And of course, in Oklahoma and Oklahoma City, in addition to hail, there's always the threat of damaging tornadoes. It's very real. They occur usually in late spring or early summer. It's probably not a surprise to anyone moving here that severe, severe weather is a fact of life in Oklahoma. It just is. From tornadoes and hailstorms in the spring to crippling ice storms in the winter, the city experiences some of the most severe weather conditions of anywhere in the United States. If you're moving here, you'll have to get used to constant weather bulletin interruptions on television in the springtime. While these interruptions are annoying, it's also kind of reassuring to know that our local television stations, they have some of the most sophisticated uh, weather radar technology systems in the country, and they give you plenty of time to adequately prepare when severe storms or even a possible tornado are headed your way. Honestly, the large damaging tornadoes that cause damage like this, they're very rare, but they do occur, and they're very real. While the local community is well prepared and equipped to handle these situations, if you're not used to it, frequently seeing images like this on your television screen, like for newcomers, can trigger a lot of stress and anxiety and definitely keep you on edge. If severe weather is something you'd rather avoid, you might want to seriously reconsider moving here. Unlike some of the other topics we, we've covered here, severe weather is the one thing we've dealt with here for generations on end. It's been that way for a long, long time and it isn't going to change. So that wraps up our discussion on why you should think twice before moving to Oklahoma City. Remember, this video isn't meant to discourage anyone, but to provide full transparency and paint a realistic picture of what to expect when living here. That way, no one will be surprised and find themselves regretting the day they made the decision to make the move. You don't want that, and neither do I. Just make sure to weigh the pros and cons based on your own preferences and priorities. I've included videos here on both the good and bad about living here. If you're still interested in making a move to Oklahoma City and are undeterred, uh, despite the points I just shared with you, that's great. I'd love to talk to you. Reach out to me. My contact information is shown in the description box down below. Give me a call, send me a text, or email me, and let's talk about it. I look forward to speaking to you soon. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video to keep me motivated in making these things, please hit the like and subscribe button, and, and also hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted when I post new videos. I would really, really appreciate your help in this. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Until next time, be on the lookout. I'm going to be posting more videos about Oklahoma City to help you make more informed decisions. But that's it for now. Take care, everyone. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.